So welcome aboard, everybody. To, yeah. Let's 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 do a quick reset on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this edition of <laughs> Coffee Break. It is uh, it's awesome to be here today, and uh, we have a special guest with us today. Actually, a couple of special guests. We over over here in the corner in the lavender shirt. Mm. If you're watching you, on you Facebook like Live, is uh, Chris Sweeney, and he'll introduce himself in a minute. The guy in the brightly colored red shirt at the end is Chris Lowry. So we'll we'll just the two Chris's will just kind of <laughs> be be one Mingle. unified. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, Sam uh, Gray, obviously. And a quick shout out, really glad to, to be back this week. Last week, Kevin and uh, Lucas did an amazing job filling in and carrying the torch for us. And, and uh, we're really, really impressed with, uh, with the job that they did last week. If you haven't heard that episode, it's live. It was live last week. Um, you can hear it on iTunes podcast. Um, Anchor, any of the podcast uh, applications that you like to listen to, just search for Lock Doc Security or Coffee Break and uh, Security, and you will find all of the information right there. So anyway, uh, let's dive into it today because this is our fourth episode, which is really exciting. Who would have thought that we would have lasted entire four episodes? Yes. Not a lot of people. Holding on strong. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh. It's, It's just becoming ridiculous. All right. So real quick. Uh, we'll get to Sam from introductions, but let's introduce Chris Sweeney. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. And you can't talk about the herd. You can't talk about the Houston Rockets. Hey, they won. You can't talk the Rockets. about hey, Panthers. Hey, no, Panthers. Mike, man. Panthers Sunday, not Sunday. Big game. It's Cowboys. Hey, go Panthers. All right. So, so, so uh, introduce yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So uh, Chris Sweeney, I'm the um, War for Asa Abloy, Door Security Solutions of the Carolinas. Started with Medico Security Locks back in 2009, and um, back in 2012, all the Medico direct reps switched over to Asa Abloy, and uh, my uh, title is aftermarket specialist, calling on uh, the end user market to all our channel partners to drive uh, new solutions um, of the Asa Abloy brands to um, get the, um, the total package of products that we have to offer. So you, and you've been around for, did you just say nine or 10 years? It's Since been, 2009. 2009, this, uh, which is around the same time that we all became introduced to each other around yes, 2009, yes. Uh, which actually next month will be whatever, how many years that is. Cause it was, but it was, it was around this time. It actually, was, it was, yeah. It was around this time. Mm-hmm. I, what, what was it? Our first time eating what? In a co- actually ago. in a coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Before y'all had the, the office. Yep. It, the common but, denominator is coffee. And, yeah, I mean, and, and nine or ten years later, and we're standing around. And it's, our own it's, yeah, exactly. Yes. The coffee has gotten better. A lot better. <laughs> well, definitely, definitely a lot. And it's, it's just been amazing to watch, you know, this relationship grow and to watch Light Dot grow. And it's, 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 it's remarkable, actually. So. so Chris Sweeney and myself spent many, many, many hours in his <clears throat> Ford Focus uh, Black Ford Focus <laughs> weaving all over the roads of North and South Carolina, trying to to get from meeting to meeting, um, and and it, so it's been a really long standing uh, relationship, which is ideally the topic that we're going to be getting into today is is managing vendor relationships and leveraging that. And I thought it would be ideal to have Sam here because Sam is our purchasing manager. So we'll jump to introduction from Sam real quick. Um, Sam is our purchasing manager. Been with us since. 2012. 2012, yes. which is around the time that we were really kind of transitioning and starting to build a an organizational structure here, yes. and that was really kind of our first stab at a, a dedicated uh, individual for specific processes, yep. which was uh, at that time, uh, the title was operation assistant, but yep. it was ideally ordering parts, sending quotes, sending quotes, inventory, all and of that stuff. Shop. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Sam. Well, um, you pretty much said everything, but but you're you're married. You have I am I am married. Um, a and, little girl. Uh, yep, I got married actually right after I started here. Yeah. Yep, I've got a, uh, one little girl that just turned two, and another one that is due at the end of October. So we're excited Amazing. about that. There you go. So, so big thing. So Sam started with us, wasn't married yet, was getting mar- in the in the process of getting married, yes. and now is going to have mm. two children. Yes. A few so. years later. Yep, my family has grown with Locked Up. Yes. There you go. So it's been exciting. So glad to have you guys here. And then, Chris, you want to introduce yourself? 
I'm Chris Lauer. You have to talk in the microphone over here. Uh, Chris Chris Lauer, I'm here because I was making coffee for everybody and the podcast started, so I walked over. Um, But I I pretty much handle the financial side of the company. So Chris sits over here on his three points. They're also on my desk, so I don't have a choice. (laughs) We just kind of took over the entire office. Chris and I have shared an office for almost the past year, and it's been an an interesting experiment. Um, So we're all here and just kind of hanging out. Um, so, <laughs> so we're having, having fun here. Um, so that's kind of introduction, getting us all started where we are, what we're doing and what we're about. Um, the thing that I really wanted to talk about today is, uh, cause I think it's applicable in any small business. If you want to dive into our industry specifically, we can do that. But I think in any small business, managing your relationship with your vendors Either a distribution channel or uh, direct a factory, I think, is an important part of your business. And that's kind of where you, 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 I was thinking about it getting prepped for this. Going back to 2008, 2009, mm-hmm. this was a strategic decision that uh, Chris and I and the rest of the folks in the company made at that point yeah. was to align ourselves with Asa Abelie and Medico at that time. And it was solely based off of probably two or three factors. One of those was Chris Schweeney. Mm-hmm. So the it's not <clears throat> just a a person; it is the person, yep. you know, the manufacturer representation that you're having yep. and how they're going to market. And that was part of the reason why we made that strategic decision to align ourselves with that was because we had had probably six months of dealings with Chris at that time, and we knew that he was going to be a great advocate for us, and he was going to help us to to go out together and drive business back to our organization. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a big factor that you have to keep in mind when you're talking about building um, building those relationships with your with your vendors. So, what? Yeah, I was you're about to say. Something? I mean, it was a lot of a lot, a lot of hard work, a lot of commit uh, communication, um, and it's working together, and that's what it what it took. And you know, and there were some uh, failures on the way, and um, and then a lot of achievements on the way. But with the, with that failures, we kept learning, you know, the right way to go to business, to grow the business, what worked for Lot Doc Security, and um, it was a win win for both uh, us Abloy and Lot Doc Security. You know, it was it was interesting because um, thinking about that, you said a lot of failures. We we went for probably what a year and a half, two years before we had any sizable. Sales, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a you know it's a um, in this industry it's a, a long term uh, business cycle, yeah, sales cycle, right? And so it's about go- going out there, hitting the streets, uh, prospecting, and building that relationship. You know, one of the things that I think is interesting that maybe parallels with some of this is that over the years, I think when we originally started down our path. My perspective, so I can only speak on that, was very short-term, short-cycled of let's go get a sale. Mm -hmm. And I think my mind has transitioned over the past nine years into building a relationship, much like um, the one that we have established with you and our organization is building a relationship where there's trust and there's Mm -hmm. going to be highs and there's going to be lows, but we're going to work through those and have an overall equality of an outcome, right? And, And I think that that's really how we started transitioning when we started building relationships with our customers instead of just trying to get a sale, if that makes any sense. So, because it's not one sided in that aspect, you know, it wasn't just both of us going out and trying to get a sale. It was both of us learning. And and then as, as a company grew, learning how our company works together and being able to, to find the benefit of that versus just trying to get that purchase order. Yeah. And then even uh, on my end of it, which is, is, Really, uh, even my position was very, very, had a small part in sales, more in, in the purchasing side. But I know that in in choosing the product that we're selling, even in on a job-to-job basis, uh, my job, I remember looking at specific product being, you know, not whether it's Medico or not, you know, when I see Medico, when I see Asa Aboy, if there's things that, issues that may arise, I feel better about it because... I have a relationship, you know, I have a direct connection, Yeah. you know, and so I feel better about choosing that product. It is a better product, but I also have that relationship where if it was another product 
and and something happens, we're probably just going to pick a different product because I don't have that relationship. I don't have anyone to go to. So you you have a confidence in yes. It's and I I think that's a really great point and probably continue to build on because you think about you we are in a unique situation where we're independent so we can sell and i tell people this whenever we go to customer meetings all the time we have the choice yeah we can sell anything that we want right we choose to sell asa abloy in most instances because of the connection and the support that we get from the manufacturers not just right the product itself yeah exactly and and then working with sam you know uh, always trying to make your job easy yep Yep. and uh, always you know, knowing for you where to go. Yeah. Um, the Os Alloy Extranet. I mean, right, right. you 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 know that was took some getting used to some training, yes. and everything is there. You know, all the price books, current price books, uh, CRC Dash, where you expedite orders. But then you know, I know you're busy a lot, mm-hmm. and I look at that CRC Dash. Yep. I take you know I'll expedite orders for you. Yep. So, you know okay. so. Um, because I know you're busy, right, and absolutely. so I try to do whatever I can to make your job easier. Well, that's and that's part of being connected with our business team, is right. you you know what we're working on, and you know the projects that are important and are high priority. And so, even right. without having to ask, right, you know what's going mm-hmm. on with that. And again, I think that's right. the communication factor, yeah. and yeah. and that's even something that we can learn in dealing with our customers is that it's not just about you know having great product. And, and being good at what we do is a huge part of, of that. But the relationship is also equally as important because they have someone, they, they trust that, that if anything goes awry, they have someone they can call and yeah. figure out what's going on and be able to connect to, to, for that situation. You're, you're in a manufacturing position. You're in a service position. Yep. There are things that are not always going to go to plan. You, you can have a, a high percentage, 75, 80% of accuracy, but there is right. a portion that you're going to have issues with missed dates or you know scheduling conflicts or whatever the case may be, and it's all in how you handle that portion. Sure. Nobody really pays attention to that other that other big chunk of yes. when you're always providing and you're hitting all that stuff. But when exactly you start right. missing it is when it becomes a problem. Right. Right. And so having and that, we've talked about that before, even with in, in our business with our customers, having a, an open con- conversation, that open communication, that, that relationship there allows you to have an honest conversation right. instead of it just being a, right. This is what it is. Right. Get yeah. over it. Type. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll, I'll even say even in, even, Personally, when I'm looking for a product or, or a service to be provided, I've even you know I, I wasn't very knowledgeable about this even this type of relationship before I started working here. But now, when I look at different companies, I generally ask them, "What is your relationship with the manufacturer?" And sometimes they're like, "What are you talking about?" You know, yeah. and I try to find someone who is directly connected to the manufacturer in that manner because I know that. I'll get the the highest level of service available. Mm. It's different than it's it's a different process than being able to sell a product than actually be connected with exactly yeah the manufacturer. Is right. that what you're? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. Even when we sell, when I'm talking to customers, they have questions. Um, that's one big selling point for me is saying, "Hey, when we sell you this product, if anything goes to it, we have a rep that will go to bat for you." Yeah. You know, through us, we're directly connected to that, and that's a, you know, and that's how we go to market. Uh, we don't sell direct; we sell through our channel partners, through uh, dealers, and so we're giving that ultimate end user yep. um, service for yes. both ends. You're, yes. They're going to get it from the manufacturer rep. They're going to get it from our channel partner. Yeah, and so I mean, again, it's just about that uh, teamwork and uh, communication and yep. working together, yep. and continuing the relationship. I, I can give you pers- I can give you perspective on the accounting side, and we deal with a lot of other uh, distributors and manufacturers. I I deal I, I I get a slew of invoices from from those people on a daily basis, and dealing with us, Alloy is is the easiest uh, vendor that we have or manufacturer that we have. They're the easiest to deal with because there there's a portal where I can go and get anything that I need. Uh, I, I, their accounting department is available if I need them, but they make all the information so easy to obtain on my own yeah. that I can go and get it there and take care of it. And in any case, when there has been a question or an issue, uh, 
again, Chris Sweeney is, is an email or a phone call away, and he goes to bat and gets things taken care of if there ever is any confusion more than anything between us and the accounting department. So that relationship carries over f- for Asa Aboy and us. It carries over from from the sale of the product all the way through the installation and, and, and us paying them for the product right. that we're purchasing. Yeah. So it's an end-to-end relationship, and it, it the communication is end to end as well, and that and that's an and that's an initiative that you know us Abloy that we're trying to do. Yep. Uh, we've been working on that ease of business and um, and get with um, up with the technology, and we continue to strive on that. We still got ways to go, but that's what our goal is to make you know our customers have ease of business. Yeah. So it's so it's interesting because. Um, we, as an organization, as Lockdock Security, we I would uh, I would kind of put us in a category at this m- point in time that we're very selective in the people that we uh, in the in the lines that we sell. I wouldn't really call it exclusive, but we're very selective because we have the opportunity to sell and, and install anything that we want. So we try to at, we're, we're trying to, and we're even in the middle now of just trying to to kind of build out what that kind of that checklist is what that those core values are of a of a manufacturer or distributor that we want to work with so that we can make sure we're meeting those needs because we don't want to be left out in the cold with our with our manufacturers nor do we want our customers to have that same issue because at that point we're just kind of stuck in the middle right right um, so it's very important how we how we choose those things um, I want to I want to take a break on that conversation real quick and jump over because I, I was thinking through this conversation as we were going through it and there may be a lot of people that will be listening to this or that maybe even are watching this online that have no clue what Asa Abloy means <laughs> um, and, and how that correlates with our business because LockDoc Security is a independent um, integrator of electronic um, security systems and mechanical door hardware. That's a bunch of uh, industry ease to say <laughs> that we install door locks, keys, doors and door frames, cameras, and key fob systems. Asa Abloy is a parent company that is almost nine billion dollars in annual revenue globally. Mm-hmm. Um, that is based out of Sweden, but has a United States com- complete division, and they own like two hundred companies. Over three hundred, oh, over three hundred fifty oh, companies. They worldwide. just keep buying up companies yeah. every other day <laughs> of different manufacturers, and that's going to be everybody. That's going to be names that you've heard of before, and names that you've never heard of before. That is back end technology that you'll probably never even hear. But they, they own products like Medico. Um, they own, own products like Sargent, Corbin Russwin, Norton, um, Door Closers. And that's just the name of it. Yale. 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 Uh, HID. HID. Um, yeah. So it, it, the, it, the list goes on and on. So I know a lot of times, and you, you mentioned the Panthers earlier, Asa Abloy has become more widely known over the last couple of years. And if you ever watch the Panthers games or if you go to the stadium, you're going to see big billboards that say Asa Abloy on it. And not a lot of people know what that means and what it's associated with. And so it's part of kind of if you see our vans driving around in Charlotte, you're going to see the name Asa Abloy on it because it's a brand that we're associated with. Uh, But anyway, I just wanted to kind of explain who Asa Abloy was to give some so Asa Abloy is the uh, global leader of door security solutions. And so uh, we can provide um, all your uh, security to a whole door opening uh, and, at one source. So we can provide all your access control, door hardware, doors. And that's one of the reasons that we have really found a good partnership with Asa Abloy because it's a total opening solution, and we go to market as a total opening solutions company. We handle everything, as Kevin says, between the studs. So, so, and, and that's the same thing that that Asa Abloy manufactures, right. which is cool. All right, I just wanted to break from that to give some context to what we were talking about. Back to the vendor relationship <laughs> portion, and, and, of and just and real yeah. quick, back to the vendor relationship with the manufacturers. You know. Um, we, that's a very strong point of manufacturers having a strong relationship with our channel partners because you're out, you know, the channel partners are actually, they're, they're the ones touching the product. Yeah. They're the f- face of our products. And so you got to continue to build those relationships. Uh, or, you know, us Abloy's um, always innovating new products. And so um, we're always coming out with, uh, training, um, training your uh, technicians, and um, if the product's not installed correctly, then you have an unhappy uh, end user, which goes back on 
yeah. the manufacturer. So we got to continue, you know, continue education uh, with our channel partners, and um, and then it's a win-win for, especially for me as a manufacturer rep. And I didn't actually come in to this industry; um, I had to learn it as I go. And for me, you know, be able to work with my channel partners on the technical side. Right. I mean, I get my technical training a lot from coming here. Yeah. So um, our touch on the product, y'all are. Help me install, like learning how to install a product. Uh, so um, it's a win-win. And um, so I think you know. that, that that that's part of the the conversation where it goes both ways. Okay, so uh-huh. as a as an organization, we want to make ourselves friendly to the vendors that we're working with. And so we we've really we really crafted this conversation to say, you know, this is all business. This is how we transact. This is the <laughs> things that we do. But it's so much more than that. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 getting connected on a personal level, like knowing what's going on in Chris Sweeney's world, knowing what's going on in Sam's world, and really being able to connect on a completely different personal level, less of the structured business. Side. Yeah. 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 We, just like we, within our own, we, we started within our, our own business here. We live life together. We all may actually work at the same place, but we're living life together. And the vendors that we have that relationship with and the, the sales reps that we have that relationship with where we're living life together that it's like any relationship that you have whether it's a business relationship whether it's a personal relationship it's the time you put into it to build the trust to build the familiarity yep that's what you're going to get back out of it and and those are the relationships that work the best for us and those are the relationships that in turn work the best for our customers yep right and it, it's it's all in uh, treating others how you want to be treated. I mean, that's just the simplicity of, of the nature. And um, and so it's been fun over the years to kind of grow that and build that and um, and work alongside of Chris Sweeney and then more. And then now even even further than that, Chris Sweeney has been able to help introduce us to a lot of other individuals on his team, and we've started to build those same types of relationships with them. In, in a very natural way to say, hey, you know what? This this is just who we are, and this is what we're yeah. doing. Come by and drink a cup of coffee and, you know, be on the podcast. And, and let's talk about that real quick. Sure. Uh, coffee? Are we talking about coffee? Coffee. Oh, okay. Back uh, on coffee. And let's talk about, you know, the relationships of our whole entire Os Abloy team. Um, you know, something that Lot Doc Security does, and uh, they have a weekly meeting. So can you kind of discuss, uh, you know, how about y'all have your weekly meeting and then – where it led to my team members was yep. um, additional training. We would come in and do uh, breakfast and learns, um, and we would do uh, training for your whole entire team. And so by, I think by your company having a organized structure allowed us to get other my team members involved with Lot Security, getting to know who they are, and um, – and talk about all their other experts on all our other products. Yeah, so obviously we have a weekly Wednesday morning meeting. We'll have one tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., um, and very oftentimes it's, it is a, it's a closed-door meeting for our organization to work together and get better. But multiple times a year we open up those doors to our vendors or if we need specified training on something. And also, I believe has always come, come through on that, along with many of our other vendors, but has come through and done very specified training for uh, any type of topic that we need more information on and they'll come in and they'll do that. And it's not just a PowerPoint presentation. It's an engaged training with our team on their level. Um, and, and just trying to keep, keep our team exposed to uh, continued education. Like that is a big, a big factor for our organization is we want to always be on the cusp, but we just want to keep things fresh. It's not this is, we learned this one time 20 years ago, and that's just what we're going to keep doing. It's a continued focus on on building that knowledge and, and growing our education um, platform. So, yeah, that, that's always been a, a great add to have you and, and, well, really just everybody else on your team. <laughs> <laughs> you just come in to eat the food. That's just right. the breakfast. Hey, not with let's talk about the breakfast yeah. <laughs> every Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. Sweeney comes in for the breakfast, and he brings somebody uh, for the learn. There yes, you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Can't or, go wrong. Or he just stops by later for the. Oh yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, he uh, knows. Wednesday. I know Wednesday. <laughs> I know. The oh, Wednesday. is it Wednesday? Oh, oh, oh. man. Oh. <laughs> but but also one other thing that they do in their meeting is um, they go around the uh, room and say one positive, uh, you know, thing about um, a team member here at Light Dog Security. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really 
cool thing that y'all do. Well, I appreciate and it. And so it just keeps that family atmosphere. You just get you get to choose your focus. There you go. Choose your um, focus. The uh, okay, f- we have like five minutes left on the podcast because we're really trying to keep this in a certain time frame. One of the things that we try to talk about every week is a it's kind of a case study, something a project that has happened recently that that we could share that would maybe benefit somebody else in in some way. So I'm throwing this on you at the last minute, and Sam may have to help out with some of this too. But what is a project that we've recently worked on together? that we could talk about in in a sense of kind of the component structure of of what's happened. I think we both know which which project. I think something a very large uh power company here uh, locally. <laughs> um, of course as a manufacturer rep, we uh, the summer port is uh a big part of our production with K through twelve universities and we miss some ship dates um, for this end user. And um, again, it goes back to um, communication. Yep. Try, you know, yes, we know that we've missed some ship dates, but I'm doing everything on my end to communicate back to the plant right. um, to get that product shipped out. And so um, just stay in that, yep. that communication with Sam about um, working together and, yeah, and, and trying to make I'll, your job easier. Yeah, I'll even say with that and with that kind of project, it's it's really cool to have that relationship because I can I can count on my hand how many distributors vendors that I deal with on a daily basis that if something is not going as planned uh, or something goes awry, the answer is the answer, and there's no not really any further. This is your ship date, and there's no further that I yeah. can go, but. You know, with a relationship like we have with Asa Aboy, you know, I can go further than that. I can know for sure, you know, that they're doing – I don't have to, to question that they're doing everything in their power because I know I have somebody that – I have a relationship that's honest, that's open with me, and that I know is going in uh, – going after it for me just as much as I would. So it's a huge, huge benefit to have on – especially on big projects like that, especially when – when stress and tension gets high or ship dates get missed yeah. to know that it's not just, Hey, this is your date too bad. If you don't like it, it's, get over it's it. Hey, this is your date, but we're doing everything we can. Cool. To, and you, and you, you know, you get that response, but you know, with this relationship, you know that it's truly what's happening. You yeah. Know? Exactly. You know, that's truly what, because that person's going to come back for breakfast the next week. And if, they, they, if they didn't yeah. perform, <laughs> you can keep breakfast. <laughs> Hold that breakfast Hold in front breakfast. of them. What, what did you find out for me? <laughs> Awesome, guys. And, and I know we have only a couple minutes left also, but in our industry, um, being like lot dot security is also uh, have um, very organized. And y'all have identified your employees with specific um, roles. roles. Mm-hmm. And you have a sales department. You have accounting department. And um, you know, project management department, and so I think for a manufacturer, um, and you have a specific email address like sales at lot doc mm-hmm. dot net, and um, I know that I can always email like a lead, and that someone's always going to be getting it. So I think being organized like yes. that has helped out a lot from manufacturer side. So right. we, we can know who to send the email to that I, we know that our customers will be taken care of. Oh, that's fair. And so that's something that, and also how y'all decided to kind of go outside the box in this industry and hire outside sales reps. And I think that's been a unbelievable oh, success oh, yeah. that y'all mm-hmm. have done that. Oh. And, um, so that's yeah, most that's, definitely, and it, and it's been fun too. It has so so yeah, it's it's been a fun experience and a continued experience. But we'll uh, um, we'll uh, continue to chat about that in the future. Any other closing thoughts? Cool, you. I'm good. Yeah. Well, my coffee cup is about empty, so that means that uh, our coffee break is about over. Sweeney, thank you for uh, thank you for this opportunity for uh, coming on the podcast. Let's it, get it, wasn't more sales. So, it wasn't. It so, wasn't. Always, always got to ask. Where's the next cell? Yes. <laughs> so I went downhill. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. It was so bad. Yeah. It was good. Thanks it was for good. coming. Go Panthers. Go Panthers. Sam. 
Go get Crocs. Get, what? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Go locked up. That's not what I was going to say. I was going to say go back to work. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time on Coffee Break. <laughs>